This year's business leaders are an extraordinary example of a comprehensive approach to energy efficiency. They're showing that these investments are helping them as a business succeed, increase their productivity, at the same time helping us to meet public policy goals to reduce our carbon emissions and to have a sustainable and affordable energy system. The story of Interlake School District is one of patience and perseverance. Energy efficiency in our building stock, and particularly in our schools, isn't just one thing. It's not an overnight success story. It is a long staged approach. And they did this by starting with building a team, creating a plan and setting goals, and then implementing that plan, measuring, and then starting all over again. Our facilities are an important part of education because we can't learn if we're not comfortable. Over the course of the last 10 years, we did some work in the walk-in freezers and refrigerators. Instead of running all day long constantly, they go on as necessary, cutting our consumption by 30 to 40 percent. We did the LED lights, and we expect a, a 40 percent uh, decrease in what we're using. You, know, you chip away at uh, some projects to get things moving, and then before you know it, you're, uh, you're moving on to bigger and better projects. We wanted to diversify our energy, and so we decided to go with pellet boilers, as well as maintaining our oil burners so that we could have options. We will also have a very large solar array between our fields, and we have uh, solar thermal at our elementary school now, which is providing almost all of our hot water. It makes it more real for students when they can take knowledge that they're learning in class and apply that so that then they see the whole picture of it's not just a place I come to school, it's a living, breathing classroom. It allows us to make decisions that are based on the longer term economic benefits of it. When all is said and done, we will be approximately 83% renewable energy on campus. It's possible to be green and economically feasible and doable and also create learning opportunities in the process. In Vermont, it's really incredibly exciting for us when we can pioneer to a new place. And a big part of that for us is going much deeper and wider in the work that we do on energy efficiency to deep energy retrofits uh, and beyond. That gets us excited about the future of energy efficiency. Hannaford is a supermarket chain in the Northeast. We have about 188 stores currently. So Efficiency Vermont is Vermont's statewide energy efficiency utility. One of the most engaged customers is Hannaford, primarily because their structure is really set up to support efficiency projects. A critical element of Hannaford's commitment and success to its investment in efficiency is there being an overall Hannaford Brothers energy department. Our plan is to run the most efficient stores we can. We can advocate for more energy efficient equipment in the new stores and in the remodels, bringing them down to a four year ROI or less. Some of the projects that we've been doing in Vermont include replacing our case lights to LEDs. We'll also do main sales lighting and peripheral lighting upgrades to LED as well with motion sensors. We've been putting zero energy glass doors on the refrigerated cases to contain all the cold air. We connect a glycol heat exchanger to our refrigeration rack. We're actually extracting the heat from there, transferring it to a glycol that goes into our rooftop air handlers and using that to reheat the store. One of their stores located in Brandon, Vermont, is committed to reducing its energy use by 50% by the end of this year. The Brandon store was very inefficient the way it was built. We have a very high electric bill compared square footage wise to the rest of the company. There is a ripple effect throughout the community. Different customers and even associates have came to me and talked and how they're, they're actually doing more in their own homes. I think we'll actually have sales gains in many of our stores from our energy projects as an extra benefit. Government is often a leader in helping to demonstrate energy efficiency efforts, really, to lead by example. So the government agencies, in order to do this continuous improvement, they need to come up with a plan, they need to execute it year after year after year, they need to revise those plans, because invariably you learn new things or new opportunities, etc. So it's been this continuous process, and I think it's very exemplary. 
The Office of Personnel Management in Washington, D.C., we are the HR for the federal government. We help federal agencies with their personnel policies as well as um, retirement for federal employees and health insurance benefits. Our goal is to reduce energy based on the ESA, which is Energy Independent Security Act of 2007, and a recent executive order, uh, 13693. Essential of what it is is to reduce energy intensity 2.5 percent per year by 2025. Here at the Office of Personnel Management, we have taken part in several different levels of energy efficiency programs to ensure that we are not only getting the best out of our current equipment, but that we are replacing aging equipment and doing the best we can with the programs that we already have in place. One thing that's great about the Office of Personnel Management is that they really did address the low-hanging fruit. Now they're really looking at some more complex projects that really might cost a little bit more money, but will really make their building one of the top performing buildings in the district. Some of the things we have done uh, are replacing our chillers. We've installed a wireless lighting system throughout the building. We have also uh, replaced our stairwell lighting with LEDs uh, that work with motion sensors. We also have uh, variable air volume boxes in the building now versus our old inefficient heating coil system. To create more reliability for systems, we are exploring a CHP, which will handle a little less than the base load of the pollen, which means that if the grid power goes out, we can operate. One important thing that OPM has done is they have adapted a strategic sustainability performance plan. That plan helps them understand the opportunities, what order to take them on, what to invest, how to prepare for that, how to build it into their operations as well as their capital management plan. Once you get those early adoptions and you realize the savings from the low-hanging fruit, people are anxious to say, okay, how far can we go? with the next phase and so we're happy that the Office of Personnel Management is actually in that second level of energy efficiency. The goal is not to just do what is the bare minimum but to do the best we can um, while saving money and using those uh, the benefits from saving money to then fund further projects. Then it also pulls the energy load that we are using in this building and then leaves it out there for everybody else that's on the same grid. Business leaders on Long Island are beginning to incorporate next generation technology. So they're moving from simply replacing light fixtures to looking at a more holistic approach to building energy efficiencies. And then ultimately integrating all the technology with a control system so it optimizes the use of overall energy in the building. And then uh, in many cases helps the performance and the comfort of their employees as well. CA Technologies is a software and solutions company that looks to improve the way we live, transact, and communicate. We have a global carbon reduction commitment of 35% by 2020. With our facilities group and our corporate real estate, um, they are able to work with PSEG to understand what opportunities there are for them to, to become more efficient. We have uh, several chiller units, so as opposed to running them at 100% all the time to maintain the building, we're able to put a VFD on one of the chillers. We've done other things like in the parking lots, we've put in LED lighting with motion sensor detections. We've done all of our staircases with motion sensors, LED lighting. The building has two large water tube boilers up on the roof. We've actually gone to a PLC controller on those. We're looking at the energy efficiency of the cooling that is supporting our IT loads. What I find most impressive about CA Technologies is the culture that they foster here. The green practices, sustainable design, and energy efficiency is well ingrained into the uh, corporate DNA. They're clearly committed to this concept of corporate sustainability and they're approaching this from a multiple system basis. This isn't just talk, that they really are walking that talk. It's very simple. It's, it's, it's good for our planet and it's good for our people and it's good for our profit. And when you are able to hit the triple bottom line on a project like that, there really is no argument to why we shouldn't implement it. As we look out into the future and we think about where we've come from and where we're going to, it's a recognition that we will go much more deeply and broader with our customers and how we can essentially integrate systems rather than singly looking at high performance individual systems and recognize how that fits into customers who are planning the kind of asset value that they anticipate to bring that efficiency out of their organization. 
The Rhode Island Airport Corporation is a quasi-public entity set up to run the state's airport system. Because we receive no state funding to operate the airports, we need to be self-sustaining. So we found that uh, energy efficiency programs have been uh, ideal for that. We started off with the low-hanging fruit, um, you know, the, all the simple lamp replacements, if you will. We've progressed to energy management systems that allow us to have real data that we can review, quantify, and make adjustments as needed. We have an optimum start-stop function with our air handling units that allows the units to look at the space temperature requirements. At our glycol facility, one of the byproducts of treating the glycol is methane. We use the methane to heat the building. And we've just entered into a huge contract to go nearly 100% solar. Uh, that will be rolling out over the next year. Rhode Island Airport Corporation and National Grid have had a long-standing uh, relationship. They've saved about $850,000 annually, and it was about 850 kW of reduced load to the grid. One of the things I really like about the Rhode Island Airport Corporation was their commitment to what Governor Raimondo has really tried to illustrate, which is that energy efficiency is a first fuel. Through an executive order, there's really a very aggressive set of policy that are being laid out by the governor and by the energy office in Rhode Island, and the Airport Corporation is really taking those to heart. We manage to the bottom line, and looking for energy efficient programs is a way to save revenues and to promote the airport's green image. We continue in this region to be the leaders for the entire country in energy efficiency, and it is incumbent on us to be thinking ahead about what are the next technologies and the next business processes that we can bring to our customers. We have not run out of opportunities to save energy. There are so many more opportunities to use energy more wisely and better. Monadnock Paper Mills we employ approximately 200 employees making specialty products. We started making paper here by hand in 1819. And uh, the first mechanical equipment went in in 1835. And it's not long from now that we'll be celebrating our uh, 200th anniversary. Monadnock Paper Mills has had to innovate to stay relevant and to stay a business leader in New Hampshire and in the paper industry. Energy efficiency is part of that innovation going forward to maintain and to ensure that they're leaders for years to come. Some of the more recent projects completed here are replacing uh, outdated air compressor with a, a new efficient variable speed air compressor the replacement of lighting throughout the facility, and we installed an automated pond leveling control system that we've calculated has allowed us to generate an additional 25 to 27% of electricity uh, using that system. At the Monadnock Hydroelectric Station, uh, we installed flashboards to increase the head on top of our, the crest of our dam, which enabled us to improve our generation at that site. We've also upgraded a number of our rooftop HVAC units. At our wastewater treatment plant, we replaced three surface aerators in our lagoon system to more efficient units. And additionally, we converted the iconic Monadnock paper mill sign with LED lighting, which saved a, a tremendous amount of electricity. Year after year, they come through with projects and we look at them, we make sure they're good projects, then we offer an incentive to move them forward on doing that project. For this company, sustainability has been a forefront goal for a long, long time. 